Watch. Listen to this. The White House is continuing its attack against MAGA Republicans, even after Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre was found to have violated the Hatch Act by using the phrase before the midterms. Senior communications advisor Andrew Bates now saying President Biden's plan to grow the American economy is delivering. Unfortunately, congressional Republicans' main economic agenda item is very different. MAGA tax welfare for the richest Americans and giant corporations. Brandy Cruz is the host of Undivided podcast. And she joins me now. Brandy, uh, good morning to you. So the White House is still using the MAGA phrase, even they, though they were told it violates the Hatch Act. What do you think about this? I will say, maybe in an unpop unpopular opinion, I actually do agree with the White House that I'm kind of like, is the MAGA, is that a violation of the Hatch Act? I mean, both parties are guilty of trying to paint their opponents as extremists. I mean, they've even done it from the dais. And so I'm not sure about that. But at the same time, I am deeply annoyed by the continued continued use of the MAGA phrase. MAGA, ultra MAGA, uh, what other variations? Mega MAGA, is that it? <laughs> because in Washington state, I mean, if you look at it, it's like it was coordinated. I mean, it's like the Democratic Party sent out an email saying you must use the phrase MAGA be, be, uh, for every single thing that you say about Republicans. And even Republicans who have distanced themselves from the former president, they're still mega MAGA, ultra MAGA, because yeah. they, they want to gas voters into thinking that they're dangerous. Yeah, you know, Brandy, that's an interesting point, because uh, people who support Donald Trump, they like to be referred to as MAGA Republicans. They see it as compliment. That is, you know, their phrase, and that's why they voted for him. And then you have Hillary Clinton earlier this week saying that if you support Donald Trump, you're a part of a cult. And you remember what happened when she called Republicans deplorables? It doubled down in support for Donald Trump, and here she is doing it again. Yeah, a basket of deplorables. Uh, I agree with you. I think there's a—I mean, when you just look at the phrase, make America great again, it's not particularly bad. But Democrats know it has a connotation. It mm -hmm. has a connotation that moderates and independents—I'm an independent—don't particularly like, although I can see past the BS of it. But in Washington state, for instance, you know, we have where I'm at— we have a, a state with a very low approval rating for the former president. And so Democrats here, every single Republican candidate is a mega Republican because they know the connotation of it. They want to gaslight. They want to fear monger voters yeah. into not supporting that person. It's strategy. And unfortunately, I think sometimes it works. Yeah, Brandy, let's keep it on uh, the former president here because the Trump campaign says it's raised more than six and a half million dollars since news broke about his federal indictment last Thursday, exactly one week ago. More than two million came from uh, the New Jersey fundraiser on Tuesday after he was arraigned in Florida. Four and a half million was raised through online donors. So the Trump campaign would say that this indictment only bolsters support for the former president. What do you say? Well, that has been the magic of Donald Trump. I mean, going back to when he was first a candidate for the presidency, he had this way of turning what would have been uh, not only a negative, but would have been campaign enders in a traditional political environment into something that he got people to cheer him on for and to celebrate. So I don't think it comes as a surprise that he's able to fundraise off of this. I've said for a long time that I, I think if you're in Trump's camp still, I don't see many things that could get you out of it. And this also has the added benefit for the former president of forcing even his campaign rivals to have to come to his defense uh -huh. at this stage in the campaign and to have to speak out about what the DOJ is doing almost as a matter of course. They're forced to do it on camera. They're forced to do it in interviews. They are forced to talk about and defend Donald, Donald Trump. And that's not a great position for them to be in because that means they're not talking about themselves. Yeah, it's so true. You have Vivek Ramaswamy who's making his entire campaign right now about pardoning uh, the former president if it comes down to that. Brandy Cruz, so great to have you on this morning. Thanks for joining us. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilney. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.